What is happening, everybody? Trey here, joined by my dad, Sean, and today, reactions to the classics. We're going to be talking about concept albums, our favorites, as well as yours. We asked uh, the community over on Patreon, as well as our uh, Facebook group, our Discord group. Be sure to join those up if you want to uh, just uh, join a great uh, community That's of right. uh, people who love music from all uh, types of eras and genres, man. So, shout out to everybody who uh, contributed their list of favorite concept records. And uh, uh, we're going to start, Dad, uh, by taking it all the way back okay because you know you know, as with anything in music some people get a little touchy oh you know, this isn't a true concept record or this isn't a concept yeah, record. i mean i may get that way in a little <laughs> bit so i would watch watch getting that voice with it man. but uh, so what what is a concept album well one good definition that i thought kind of hit the nail on the head is a collection of songs written by a musician or group that is based around a central theme or concept. These themes can be compositional, lyrical, instrumental, or narrative. And I think that's important too where we say a central theme because not every uh, record that's going to appear on this list is going to be something like Pink Floyd's The Wall. Right, where, yeah. Where literally every song is kind of telling the story or a lot of those, that, that's how a lot of those 70s prog rock albums yeah. were um, really just diving into one key character or theme. Um, you know, uh, uh, some of these are more loose concept records so wanted to uh, get that kind of out of the way. Um, and and now, when did these start, Dad? You know, when did concept records start? You always hear Sgt. Pepper's, right? Yeah, you do. And we'll get into that in a little while. That'll be a hot button topic. But concept records date all the way back to 1940 mm. as folk legend Woody Guthrie came out with Dust Bowl Ballads, which, as the name implies, notes the effects of the Dust Bowl and was released <laughs> as three disc 78s my grandparents had some 78s Ooh, I, I can envision it spin now spin that spin that turntable baby <laughs> let's go lps came into play in the late 40s while gatefolds would include could include liner notes in the mid 50s frank sinatra's in the wee small hours in 1955 is also notable instrumental rock group the venture started making concept albums around a central musical theme as early as 61 mm -hmm. frank zappa his mother of invention released freak out in march of 66 which takes a look at the freak scene of LA and pop culture as a whole throughout its 60 minute runtime. All right, Trey, take this over with something that's not a concept album, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> so, and now, you know, you, you, we have Mothers of Invention, right? Freak out, that comes 66, but you but know. It's still kind of out there, yeah. It's yeah. Not, not real mainstream. A lot of people aren't picking up Zappy. No, yet. and so obviously, as with a lot of things in this, you know, mid 60s periods, if the biggest band does it, it's gonna, it's gonna get a little, you know, yeah. uh, uh, magnified. And of course, the Beatles with Sarge and Peppers and you know to a degree a uh, revolver a little bit beforehand and the Beach Boys pet sounds but nothing where this like full on you know where's Paul obviously had the idea we're gonna right. make this separate type of band right. the costumes the album cover it just felt like a, a little different a little bit that we're gonna be running with this theme this concept right that influenced of course many artists to try their hand at concept records themselves these blossom into rock operas such as Tommy and Quadrophenia by The Who in the late 60s and then numerous works by groups like Pink Floyd, Jethro Tull, yeah. and Genesis in the 70s. Um, but uh, it's important to note, I think, as well, that these concept records not only were rock music-centric, but um, Marvin Gaye's What's Going On, I awesome. think, could be considered a concept record as well, and it showed what soul could do with the idea. Parliament's Mothership Connection let funk have a go in the 70s as well. And uh, the declined in popularity, Dad, and you'll be able to speak to this a little bit, yeah. where um, in the 80s, singles started to reign supreme. MTV's, you know, blowing up so um you know that kind of shifts the focus away from full album um you know experiences a little bit yeah i think my generation which i'm 51 i was born in 1971 so when the 80s hit around yeah we started spending those 45s mm -hmm. and you know cassettes came into big play and the deal with an album is you know you had to pick up the needle and try to get it in the right spot cassettes had the little fancy thing where you could press the fast forward mm -hmm. and there was dead time between song so you might buy the cassette but you're only listening yeah. to the hit songs, right? Because that's kind of, and then the CD comes in, and obviously the rest is history. Because mm -hmm. I could just go to number seven and number nine, which was kind of a a grandfather into mm -hmm. streaming, where you can do the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't think the concept album, while it can still be done, it's not going to be anything where people are trying to top each other mm -hmm. as you had in the late '60s yeah. into the '70s. No, I think that's well said. And so that that's just your brief, quick facts kind of overview. I, when doing the research, I was uh, yeah just impressed that oh, these actually can kind of date back to the right. '40s and '50s. So here are some of our favorite concept albums uh, in no particular order, right here. 
Um, we're got to start with Pink Floyd, right? Yeah. Of course, you have the Wall, which right. is a double, you know, record tells of you know this this man who's putting up a wall around him based on the institutional um, you know dread that he faces from teachers and um, authority figures and the like. And I think this is a true, true, maybe oh, as yeah. true of a concept as you get because. There's a couple songs on here that are absolute bangers, mm-hmm. but the rest of it, you're not going to pick the songs out. Yeah. They truly just unfold the story. It definitely is a total listen. Mm-hmm. No, definitely. And, you know, sticking with Floyd in the 70s, Animals, of course, taking a look at Margaret Thatcher's, yeah. uh, you know, governmental reign and the different types of people in it. Um, you know, the, the pigs, the sheeps, the dogs. Uh, I famously gave that album a seven, yeah. guys. We did all the Floyd <laughs> discography and nobody of you guys freaked out. Um, and then we have Dark Side of the Moon, of course, starting with that heartbeat, which is yep. so cool, ending with the heartbeat, bookended. Shatter. Um, you know, just kind of the story of, of life itself, war, love, the ability to choose money. Um, money yeah everything in there so uh, enjoy that and then um, you know another another uh, big time band we have the who which have a, a few under their belts as well they do they got the who sell out then they got Tommy which is an album that I actually have not listened to mm-hmm. but you know obviously a rock opera and then an album that I just did an album reaction for one of our patrons Arnie Quadrophenia uh, unbelievable album mm-hmm. and is definitely a concept album right it's all about just going through the mod culture and our protagonist going, okay, everything's great. I love this. Finding out it's kind of all, not a fraud, but like it isn't what it's supposed to Mm -hmm. be. Kind of feeling lost and desolate. So yeah, that is definitely a, a, and it, but, but I will say with Quadrophenia, the difference in that and the wall is a Quadrophenia, the music is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I actually mentioned it on my, I actually mentioned this and the wall on my, on my review and reaction to this. And, and said that I think Quadrophenia is way better. So, Ooh, okay, I like it. I like. Come it. at me, man. No, yeah, and it's it's interesting because Townsend, you know, maybe doesn't get thought of in as like, oh, he's a you know mind like Roger Waters taking these concepts and right, fleshing but, them out. But, but he is. He he really does. You know, Tommy telling the story of the deaf and blind boy. Uh, interesting, and you know, the who sell out putting in those. Uh, it's kind of polarizing with some people, but those it, it advertisements yeah. for you know the the ba- baked beans and all that. But stuff. But it's definitely it's, a concept of. You know about oh, the yeah already the commercialization <laughs> boy they nowadays. <laughs> um, well, also touching on Iron Maiden, uh, seventh son of a seventh son. This is a uh, with a boy who has powers to see into the future. The experiences that that brings him. It's a uh, some of the band members' favorite uh, Maiden record, and it's mine as well. Uh, as we mentioned, Mothers of Invention with Freak Out. Yep. You know, Zappa would uh, continue to uh, expound upon his uh, concept records even to the seventies with Joe's Garage. Um, uh, and uh, I guess it's now time to, add, to talk Beatles Sgt. Peppers sure. because um, you know even John Lennon has said that it's not really a concept album because what dad we start with the we start with the title track kind of have a reprise at the end and you know track 12 yeah. it, it goes in you know to with a little help of my friends at the start but after that there's not a lot that's really keeping this Sgt. Pepper's band together, right? You just nailed the whole summary of it all, Trey. I mean, we have a we have a, a review of this up. We have a podcast about this. We have these songs ranked. And at the end of the day, here's the thing. I did tons of research mm-hmm. on this back. It's not a concept album. Paul initially <laughs> visualized it mm-hmm. as a concept album. The costumes made you think it. You know, Paul wanted to go out and actually tour mm-hmm. as Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Band. It did not happen, right? So as you said... There's only two songs, and it's the same song that connects mm-hmm. them. And then the intro to with a little yeah. help from my friends. It's not a concept album, guys. And I know you want to think of it that way <laughs> if you were born then and around then, but it's just not. But it's okay. Yeah. But you've been fooled into being told it was a concept <laughs> album. It's not, but that's I, okay. I, I'm with you. This kind of goes I mean, back to the, the loose you know, themes. If somebody has a looser definition, they're going to yeah. say this is a but, concept But I don't even director, think there's a loose right? theme to it. Uh, yeah, I mean, just with the, the, the book ending of yeah. the of the you know albums, I think that's where people you know draw the line, and you know just the 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 cover and everything. You know, oh, there's something a thread holding this together. I can see that a little bit, even though I myself don't consider it a full on you know type Try, of trying concept. To, try, trying to appease you guys just a little bit here. <laughs> Next up, we're going to talk about an album that I just did a full reaction to with your sister Mackenzie. My Chemical Romance, The Black Parade, centers around a dying patient with cancer and the different things that he experiences. He's a young man and he's dealing with the fact that there's all these things in his life he'll never do. And his girlfriend's going to leave him. He thinks he's never going to be around his family. And it just unfolds that. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
It is an absolute fantastic album. Yeah. There's a couple songs on here that don't really belong. Teenagers in particular should have been the last track instead of the next one. It has nothing to do with anything, but it was single worthy. Nowadays, they just would have released it on streaming. It didn't have to be on an yeah. album, but it definitely is a concept album, and it's really, really well done. I was surprised at how good that album is. Oh, yeah. I, I like that uh, shout, you know, showing the more modern day yeah, 2006, uh, you know, yeah. uh, concept, you know, record. Uh, throwing it back to the Kinks as well. Yeah. Um, you know, Ray Davies wanted um, to do a concept record all the way back to 1966, but uh, that didn't come into play until they uh, came out with the, you know, the Kinks are the Village Green Preservation Society. It centers around themes of nostalgia, memory, preservation, and reflects uh, both um, Ray and Dave Davies' concerns yeah. about the modernization and uh, influence of America uh, and Europe on the English society. They really and, wouldn't appreciate and it now. <laughs> and you know, the Kinks are, I think, the most British of those British they invasion are. bands from that time. Great, and uh, you know, Ray Davies, one of the great songwriters of all time. And I just really uh, enjoy that record. Um, Willie Nelson, uh, going yep. a little country action, Redheaded Stranger. I, I like uh, I liked when we reviewed this record. We reviewed this record a very, very long time ago. Man on the run after killing his wife and her lover. So well done. And what's what's amazing about this album is usually, you know, you got a concept album, you're writing all the songs. Mm -hmm. But several of these songs Willie didn't write, but he made them all fit together and work together. A definite concept album all the way back in 1975. You may be going, I don't like Willie Nelson. Listen to this album, man. I <laughs> promise you'll like this. And Waylon did one too, Waylon Jennings, mm -hmm. but I can't remember what the name of it was, so if you're a big country fan, help me out down below. Lou Reed, the classic Berlin about the couple Jim and Caroline, struggles with addiction, abuse, prostitution, mm -hmm. and domestic violence. A very, very good album and hard-hitting. Definitely uh, one of my favorite Lou Reed yeah, records. Uh, David Bowie's, of course, Ziggy Stardust record. Uh, again, you know, maybe not every song following this concept, right. but, you know, we started out with five years and, you know, what what is this? This this alien man coming yeah. down. Uh, it, it, yet again, um, I know we're plugging our reviews here, but man, go back, check out our track-by-track uh, -track review of this and, you know, where it, it book, um, you know, finishes with rock and roll suicide Side and it just was like he started. And, and when David had a theme trait, David really, he, he really, oh, put, yeah, this man embraced whatever theme is the chameleon throughout his career. He definitely oh. embraced the theme. Yeah, there's some great footage of him in the you know Ziggy attire oh, yeah. uh, during uh, concerts at that time. Um, you know, skipping ahead to some uh, the 90s, we have Nine Inch Nails, yeah. Downward Spiral. Um, again, a bit of a looser concept record, but tells the story of a man who's kind of descending into his uh, depression, his madness and culminates in Hurt, which is uh, his uh, suicide. So, um, you know, not, maybe not the most uplifting record, but no, uh, no, a but... fantastic one. Uh, nonetheless, uh, a couple modern ones, uh, Kendrick Lamar, one of my favorite artists, Good Kid, Mad City, which is over my dad's uh, shoulder on the uh, on our background here. Um, man, and what... we, got a, we, we got a full review to this. Yeah, uh, very, one of the most cinematic records yes. uh, you're gonna hear. The skits in here really uh, kind of put you on the streets of Compton, California, in that lifestyle, even though um, you know you, you might have never experienced that right. before, um, and I, I think Kendrick's so good at that. And then his next record, "To Pimp a Butterfly," which just might be the best album of all time, um, comes in. Trey just and, drops that and starts <laughs> rolling. And you know, again, it shows threads to of uh, um, you know a poem that uh, continues to go through and builds through each song until that culminates with him talking to Tupac at the very end of the record, um, and you know dealing with. Um, um, you know, African American type themes and struggle in there. So, and Kendrick's uh, one of Pulitzer, right? Yes, yeah. So, so, I mean, you know, well, love that. Uh, Sufjan Stevens with Illinois and Michigan. He jokingly uh, said that he was going to make an album for all fifty states, but uh, uh, we're still waiting for the other forty-eight. <laughs> we are. We're still waiting for the other forty-eight. We got Marvin Gaye. What's going on? You mentioned it earlier. Nineteen seventy-one, absolutely iconic. Um, we got a reaction to this stuff, and I was blown away by this album when oh, we yeah. first heard it. The courage it took. There's a lot of great stories mm -hmm. behind it. Uh, yeah. he, re he really told Barry Gordy uh, what's going on, and he got control over this thing. You know, a lot of it deals with his the Vietnam War, his mm -hmm. brother coming back from the Vietnam War. We also got environmental issues yeah. covered in here as well. You know, we got the chatter in there, mm -hmm. the the 
transitions between the songs it's definitely a concept oh. album done quite well yeah uh, i was just gonna highlight what you did the trans this is still to this day one of the best albums i've heard it transitioning it from track to track it man is. it's so seamless and, uh, and during this time we went and caught some passes for the detroit that's Lions. right so man. another weird thing you try to make the detroit line <laughs> marvin gay the legend and then uh last of our favorites here husker do zen arcade again a bit of a looser concept record um uh, this tells the story of a boy who again kind of runs away from home and encounters the harsh realities of the world. Um, really big fan of Husker Du. And then some community picks here from a lot of wide array of uh, yes. genres and time periods. We got Alan Parsons' project, I, Robot, which uh, takes a lot of inspiration from Isaac as a mom's uh, you know, sci-fi uh, work. And uh, we have a full... Full, full reaction yeah. for Trucker Kev up on that one. Rush also uh, dipped their toes into the water in the 70s with 2112, of course, the title track, over 20 minutes long. Uh, all this uh, came inspired by, you know, drummer Neil Peart, um, uh, where he um, was inspired by the work of uh, Ayn Rand, and so, you know, that's that's kind of cool. Genesis uh, have a couple different ones. Uh, the Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, written by Peter Gabriel about a man, a Puerto Rican youth who uh, from New York City who is suddenly taken on a journey of self-discovery, encounters a lot of bizarre incidents and characters along the way, and uh, if you look up the costumes that Peter and company were Peter rocking at this it, time. Man, rocking that flute, doing that, you know, in the mid-70s, you probably could have got a lot of those uh, bizarre incidents in New York City. We also got ELO, Jeff Lynn and the Boys Time. It's a concept mm -hmm. album about a man from the 1980s who's taken to the year 2095 where he's confronted by the dichotomy between technological advance mm -hmm. and a longing for past romance. He could have just been taken to 2022. He didn't <laughs> have to go all the way to 2095. He would have got that. Got a group I'm very familiar with. Patterson Hood, Mike Cooley, Jason Isabel and mm -hmm. the Boys, Drive-By Trucker, Southern Rock Opera, uh, it either imagines or filters every topic through the context of the legendary band Leonard Skinner. Also, Dirty South has mm -hmm. a many of the same themes. Not mm -hmm. that, but many. It's it's very thematic. And uh, even Decoration Day is somewhat thematic. So mm -hmm. this guy's really pushing that long albums, but very well done. Even if you're not into Southern rock or slash country or Americana, you're really going to mm -hmm. like these albums. And then Trey... You have one on here that I was not aware was content. Yeah, no, I had to go and look. I, I can't remember what uh, patron mentioned this, but Simon Garfunkel book ends. Um, it explores the uh, journey, you know, of life through childhood to old age, but um, it's only that first side. So that's what you know made me yeah, uh, never threw me off a little bit. But then I was looking at the track list again. I was like, oh yeah, that that does make sense. So once you know, you know. Yeah, um, and you know, sticking in that period, Elton John, Captain Fantastic, and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. I actually have been listened to this. There's a couple on here I haven't listened to. Yeah, but I'm not listening to it either. I'm, I'm taking the community's word for it, and this is on my list because uh, it, it sounds pretty cool, too. It was written, actually, in chronological order by the great Bernie uh, Toppin, and uh, it is a concept record that gives an autobiographical glimpse of the struggles that John, who is Captain Fantastic, ah. and Bernie here as the brown dirt cowboy had in the uh, early years of their musical career. So, um, man, I, I know a couple tracks from this record, but uh, I need to sit down and give it a, a proper listen. Yeah, and if you don't know, these guys were staff songwriters mm -hmm. together. That's how they, they came about. You got Queensryche, Operation Mind Crime. The story follows Nikki, a drug addict who becomes disillusioned with the corrupt society of his time and reluctantly becomes involved with a revolutionary <laughs> group as an assassin of political Ooh. leaders. It sounds like this could happen in 2020. Yeah, I was going to say, that's not one I've uh, listened to, but I know it's as one of the uh, best metal concept records. I just so. really know these guys from Silent Lucidity, which is a much more <laughs> dialed back one. But you got Father John Misty, pure comedy, themes of progress, tech, environment, politics, religion, human nature. Uh, Father John Misty, Josh, uh, sometimes gets on this realm a little bit of uh, of themes and mm -hmm. topics in all of his albums. He can be a bit pretentious, <laughs> but um, I have reviews up of every one of his albums if you want to check them out. Very talented guy. Yeah, and then uh, we also have Green Day's American Idiot. It was a humongous record in the uh, 2000s um, and follows the Jesus of Suburbia, an yeah. adolescent anti-hero, and has some of the uh, biggest hits on Green Day's career. Um, we also have Ween's The Mollusk. Uh, again, this is more kind of a musical theme, the dark nautical nature, um, and uh, again, kind of a, incorporates a bit of that psychedelia. That's some sea shanties up in here. Um, and uh, yeah, it's so, a... Yeah. Fast. It's a it's a cool record. Another loose one, Bruce Springsteen's The Rising. Yeah, very, very loose. Based in large part uh, on his reflections during the 9-11 uh, 
attacks. Obviously, the title track is tremendous. Predominantly centers upon the themes of relationship struggles, existential crisis, social uplift. About half the songs were done before 9-11. Mm. So it's a very loose concept album. I'd say it's more a thematic uh, album. Yeah, and then we have uh, Randy Newman's Good Old Boys, and uh, that was uh, initially taken about a character named Johnny Cutler, a man from the Deep South. It ended up, though, taking uh, several characters Randy did in the Deep South rather than just this one guy, and uh, you know, kind of expounded upon that there. Randy, a very good songwriter himself. Yes. And then uh, finishing off with a couple from the 2000s, we have Mars Volta's uh, D. Laus in the Comatorium, um, a very enigmatic, kind of very strange, acclaimed. Uh, strange record at points, but some fantastic guitar work there. Um, centers around a man who uh, entered a week-long coma after overdosing on morphine and rat poison, and if that doesn't get you in the door, I don't know what will. And then Songs for the Deaf, again, a bit of a looser one, um, from Queens of the yes. Stone Age. Dave Grohl on drums on this, fantastic. And uh, you kind of go through the record as it goes. It's like the radio uh, is turning, and you're you're driving through California, and that's what the band envisioned. So those are the community picks right there man of course we want to hear your picks down below what are your favorites from these that we mentioned and um maybe we didn't what if we we uh, are always uh always looking to, to hear your opinion down below so final thoughts Trey. i mean concept albums i don't think you'll find very many more from here on in in the history of music because we don't live in an album world and mainly because of people's attention span because of these things mm -hmm. they don't want to like if you're listening to a concept album you're in it man you're in mm -hmm. it. Like you got to sit there and listen to yeah. the whole thing, and you got to pay attention, man, to the lyrics and stuff. And I think increasingly we live in a society that just doesn't have that kind of attention span. Doesn't really want to dial into the finite details. I mean, I'm sounding like the old guy here. I don't mean this. It just it's just facts. It just is mm -hmm. what it is. I'm not saying this is a good or a bad thing, but I don't think concept albums really are, and they haven't existed in a long time. But I don't think they're going to make some sort of great comeback. Mm -hmm. But when they're done right, I think they're fantastic. But I also think, uh, you know, that they have a little bit of a uh, a, a difficulty in finding mm -hmm. an audience like a band that I didn't bring up my favorite current band that still puts out new music Quiet Town by The Killers mm -hmm. is a definite concept album that's true Brandon yeah. Flowers writes back to his growing up in a, in a small Utah town but there's not a single you can pick out and go mm -hmm. hey dude go listen to this you know because they've got in between every song at the start of them they have real people from that town talking mm -hmm. and stuff but I love that album I think it's one of the best albums of 2021 but some people don't like it at all yeah. so and I think that's just a great example of a, a newer album that just uh, it's so polarized I think groups mm -hmm. don't want to take that gamble no I, I think you said a lot of good uh, points right there dad and I, I think in the world of streaming and of making oh I'm just going to make my own playlist yeah. And, uh, yeah. you, you know just the just whether it's a concept album or, or not just at full album listens in general um i don't know i'm just thinking of some of my friends who you know it's different too whenever you're in this like i'm sure a lot of people here obviously are listening to full albums of course but your, your common type of person yeah. maybe who's just more a casual music fan yeah. um is just gonna you know pull out the singles and, and call it a day so uh, i'm with you i don't expect a resurgence of concept records uh any anytime soon though i'm, I'm sure that uh, there, there'll still be some good there'll ones here, here, and here and there that uh, that pop up but uh cool cool discussion to Today. Uh, if you have any other suggestions as well for topics to tackle, um, please let us yeah. know that in the comments as well. But that I guess that'll wrap it That's up it. from us today. So until next time, y'all, thanks for watching, happy listening, and we will see you.